Other storylines around his club at the moment. Coach, thanks for taking the time to join us. This derby, always a big one for you guys. What's maybe the difference going into this one now that the postseason push is very much on? Um, well, the timing, right? I think, um, you know, Red Bull are in four, we're in seven, but there's only three points that separates us. So um, both teams will want fourth place because of the, you know, the the home playoff game, the, the advantage that you get. So the timing means that not only is it a local rivalry, but the points are really important. Coach, um, I want to talk about the uh, last match you had, a uh, huge draw against Inter-Miami. And I mean, the scenes, right? Everyone keeps talking about the scenes of Inter-Miami bus coming in, the vibes in the stadium. I think that's a, about as packed as I've seen it since maybe Pirlo's debut. The energy was strong. A lot of NYCFC fans, in particular the TIFO. I know you brought it up in the post-game conference. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what this TIFO meant when you guys saw this? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody around around soccer in, in the United States can see that it's Miami mania, it's Messi mania at the moment. And when you see the stadiums are packed and the pink shirts, I think, you know, when they come to our stadium, uh, you know, you're waiting to see what it's going to be like. And, and, you know, I didn't question it. I saw the TIFO was amazing. There's blue shirts. I think it only shows me and confirms to me the spirit and the character that we have in our football club. And our fans will always be, you know, I think they're amazing, but they were definitely the push that got us the point in the game. Coach, looking forward to the game at the weekend, especially to Derby, oftentimes it's said that your surrounding context shouldn't be considered when you go into a Derby match because it can make or break you. It can turn a season around if you need to. I mean, look at Derby de la Madonina mm -hmm. this weekend. Mm -hmm. Like, no one gave two Change cents. The narrative. Completely. Right, for, for, for Milan. For you guys, since the return of the League's Cup, you're, you're winless in four. So how much bigger does that make the game at the weekend? Um, I mean, it's definitely a big game anyway because it's local rivalry, right? And we haven't gone back to back since 2022 and the opportunity for us to do it is there. But, you know, our form, if you look at results, has not been where we want it to be. But there's been huge elements of the performance that that we want to take into this game. There's areas we want to fix. but Like which ones? Well, you know, I think we have gave away silly goals at times. I think we, you know... We've not taken chances. It's just small elements in our game that I think that we are one step away from being able to make a run, right? And we've been in this this sort of situation before when I reflect on 2021 and even 2022, you know, we got a point in an Atlanta in 21 and it gave us a springboard. We won Campione's Cup in 22 and it gave us a springboard. And I look at this game like a huge potential moment for us. Coach, uh, let me ask a little bit about just in general when you look at where you sit at the table. In seventh, really missed an opportunity potentially with a win against Inter Miami would have springboarded you into the top four. Now you're left with four matches, the first one of which is this Hudson River Derby. Huge match. But how important is it to try to get New York City FC into that top four, potentially some home field advantage as well? Yeah, for us, it's the, it's the aim that we had at the start of the year. It's it was the the one target, maybe a, a huge target based off the fact that we didn't make playoffs last year, but we believe in everything that we do. And to be sitting here with four games and have that target just right in our grasp, it's a, a huge opportunity for us. We play against our local rivals. Following that, we play two home games in front of our amazing fans. So, you know, for us, the past nine games haven't been perfect and haven't been where we want them to be, but the... The main goal is still there for us, and that has to be our focus. Coach, I want to talk about goalkeeper Matt Freeze. I got to watch him actually in person at City Field. I think it was a demolition you guys had against Montreal and thought he's been solid throughout the season. How have you seen him grow as a goalkeeper this campaign? And what do you think of his prospects, especially given the U.S. men's national team goalkeeping situation in the bigger picture? I think Matt Freeze, you know, I couldn't speak highly enough about Matt Freeze. I think. He didn't start the season last year as number one, so he had to be patient. He came in at the back end of last year. This year, he started as our number one. And, you know, I think when I look across my tenure as uh, in MLS from 2020, all the top teams have a goalkeeper that can produce huge moments and kind of add points to the board by saving you in those moments. And Matt Fries has done that for us this year. He's came up with huge moments when we're under pressure. He has been... In my opinion, the best goalkeeper in MLS this year. Unfortunate not to get in All-Star. So, you know, when you start to talk about national team potential and, you know, I think he can achieve whatever he wants. His mentality and his professionalism is exceptional.
Coach, talk to me a little bit about James Sands. Finally gets his first goal, first career goal for New York City FC. What's his what's really? different? Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. What's different about him ever since coming back from the loan at Rangers? And and where do you think he is as far as being a leader on this team? Because it feels like he's taking steps towards that. Yeah, he definitely is taking steps with, with his leadership. That is a a responsibility and an expectation that I, that I put on him when he came back from Rangers. You know, when you have that experience, when you play in a Europa League final, you have to use that to impact the team. And he definitely has done that. I, th I think his best attribute this year has been how fit he has got, his physical side of his game. You look at the data, he wins the most duels, the most regains, the most tackles in MLS. His off-the-ball play has been exceptional. And... You know, I say to him all the time, he has to add some goals to a game. He has to be more offensive for the team. So it's taken a long time for him to get his first goal. He actually told me it's his second goal because he got one at Rangers, but definitely his first for New York. <laughs> Coach, derbies are just so much fun. It, it makes the, the stakes so much higher and it, the fans get into it. When you look at the best derbies across world football, what are some others that are favorites of yours? Well, I, you, you know, it's hard for me not to be biased because I'm from the northwest of England, right? So the Merseyside Derby, I've seen many, many of them. Um, my team is normally the underdog in the in, in those games, so but I've seen them win many, many times. So I actually think a, a local derby is the lifeblood of the, the the city. It's a good marker of how much your city loves the sport. So if you look at the Merseyside Derby, you know, you look uh, up in Scotland, Rangers and Celtic and... You know, since I've been here, our, our derby is feisty. You know, both teams want to want to win this year. The, you know, last year was the inaugural Hudson River Derby Trophy, right? And our, it's important to our fans. And Red Bull hold that. They won the first one last year. And with the win earlier on in the season, we have the opportunity to, to take that this year. Alexis said he would dye his hair light blue if you guys win, so. I will, actually. <laughs> well, I, will, I will dye mine light blue, too. <laughs> yeah. like, well, I don't think we're allowed to show that on TV. Is it your back hair? <laughs> Nick, on that note, I have a hypothetical contract here. Oh, and oh. it says, you will win the Derby this weekend 3-0, handedly, convincing team performance, but... Everton doesn't win a Merseyside Derby for the next five years. Would you sign this? I sign it now, right now. I sign it. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's why he's a coach. Man. Actually, I have a question. What happened to your Scouse accent, bro? <laughs> no, well, most people from outside of the northwest of England would say that I sound a little bit from Liverpool, but I'm actually from Ellesmere Port, which is about 25, 30 miles from Liverpool, so it's not necessarily right in the middle of where Evan and Liverpool are. Oh, the accent have, changes that much. We have it listed as Chester, which is really close. <laughs> yeah, I'm right by Chester. Yeah, I'm right by Chester. That's so close. I don't understand how so the So you become different. intelligible to unintelligible <laughs> yeah, yeah. is 30 miles. Right. In 30 miles, you <laughs> learn to pronounce your consonants. That's crazy. <laughs> what is something, Coach, that people say over here that you think is maybe a weird turn of phrase or the way it's pronounced is, is strange to you? <laughs> well, Don't no, say soccer. no, 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 no. It's not so much. It's not around the sport. You know, I, I get family that come over all the time, and you know they struggle with like zucchini with the vegetable names we don't call zucchini zucchini in england we call it courgette we don't call cilantro cilantro we call it coriander so there are many differences that my family really struggle with when they come over regarding football or soccer um you know, there's certain things like we, we don't say like end line, we say touch line. You know, we don't say field, we say pitch. There's those sort of things that I think you get used to when you spend time in America. I had one moment actually with Nick uh, back when NYCFC won MLS Cup. There was a big party right after it. Cushion grabs the microphone, starts chanting, Champions, Champions, <laughs> Ole, Ole, Ole. And I said to him, I go, you know that's like really close to the word for mushroom in Spanish? There's no word that is Champions, it's Campeones. And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was like a moment where I'm like trying to explain Spanish to an Englishman. It was a whole moment. Coach, and that leads me to this. In that time, you've seen this club just take different directions. Obviously, Tate Castellanos was so instrumental in that MLS Cup run. Sean Johnston, a part of that team as well. Then you go into last year where in the league, okay, didn't go the way you want, but you guys have been known to sweat through difficult moments. And then this season, 
You're back to getting in a playoff spot. How would you describe the journey for this NYCFC team since winning MLS Cup? Um, well, listen, it's been a up and down journey since I've been here in 2020, right? We had a crazy playoff game in 2020 where we lost to Orlando. And then in 21, we were up and down in the season and we went on to win. In 2022, we were we started on fire and then we had a difficult moment that got us then through to the conference final. Last year was, you know, another moment that we found difficult, but there was elements that we have to look at that were positive and we had to retain going into this season and this season we've had started slow and then a real strong period and now we're in a you know what is perceived as a, a dip and you know i think what i love about this organization what i love about new york city football club is the expectation and the demand to be successful is there and it's really really clear it comes from our fans it comes from our organization above it comes from our players and our staff and that really drives you on. I really enjoy that. I really enjoy the um, the demand that is we have to be a team that makes postseason. We have to be a team that strives for home postseason games. And I will continue to say, you know, the dream for me is to have a home playoff final in New York. I think if you can get a conference final in New York, that would be an amazing experience that would give us a chance to win MLS Cup. And we have to work towards that week in, week out, year after year. We have to work towards that aim to deliver for our fans another big step for this organization is the new stadium coming in 2027 the first soccer specific stadium coming to new york city just what does that signify not only for this organization but for soccer in this portion of the country and in america uh, i think it's so exciting i've said before um that to have a soccer specific stadium to have our own home in new york is is going to be amazing. But, you know, going back to the Miami game, to see when the bus came in, to see the TIFO, to see the fans, when the Messi shout went round the stadium and our fans sang over it, that is only another example for me that this is going to be an amazing environment to watch soccer. This is going to be a place where um, it's going to be a real exciting place to watch an exciting team play a brand of soccer that we believe in but also see our amazing fans making noise, creating atmosphere in the greatest city in the world. I can't wait to see the first win from the official Cooligan suite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to get that blocked. Uh, hey, Coach, do, do you, before we let you go, do you say soccer or football now more that you're coaching in MLS? Um, I, well, I do say football because it's just in me, right? I've been, you know, I'm 40 this year and I've been watching the game since I was three years old. But my kids have literally grown up in America since 2020, since we came here. My boys are 13 and 10 and my daughter is seven and they say soccer and they're well ingrained in travel soccer teams. So, you know, you will catch me sort of flipping between the two. <laughs> A house divided. Nick Cushing, great stuff. Best of luck coming up this weekend and thanks for taking the time this morning. Thank you, guys.